cooperative. Don't get scared. I'm a habitual violent offender. Right into an officer calling for backup. I guess there was a bailout when he tried to do a traffic stop. I did nothing wrong. Relax. I did nothing wrong. I came from the mud. There's dirt on my hands. Strong like a tree. There's roots where I stand. Oh, I've been running from the law. Try to catch me howling at the moon. Introducing the MPS Defender. This is a folding convertible ballistic shield for personal and vehicular use. Perfect for the day to day patrol officer and versatile enough for any special operation assignment. The shield in a folded configuration is 21 by 15 inches. Unfolded, your mobile area of cover is now 36 by 15 inches. It has four loops to attach a sling so the user can wear it slung over their back. The interfacing molly panel system allows you to attach any extra gear necessary. On the front of the shield, you have bright LED lights that can be activated ambidextrously via the rear handle's dual buttons. The shield itself weighs seven pounds with its included level 3A soft armor, which stops up to 44 Magnum as well as buckshot and slugs. Adding a ballistic plate insert brings the weight up to only 12 pounds, while stopping up to M80 and M855 rounds. The MPS Defender includes a mount allowing you to attach the shield to any car door for rapid deployment. To learn more about this life-saving equipment, visit the link down below. Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're with Davie Police Department. We're gonna be going out on patrol. We're gonna be doing Charlie's shift with Officer Caleb Smith. He's just getting out of roll call now. Let's go meet him. Guys, there he is. What's up, brother? How What's are you, up, man? bro? Hey, it's good to see you, dude. How's everything? Everything is going well, man. Welcome to the channel. Let's do it. Introduce yourself to the Nod Squad. So my name is Officer Caleb Smith. Uh, I've been a law enforcement officer for about seven years. The last four have been with Davy Police Department. Prior to this, I was in corrections at BSO. I'm currently assigned to the Road Patrol Unit in Davy. We work on the best shift, which is Charlie's shift. And I see you got that CIT badge there. Any other credentials? Like you suggested, I'm on the CIT, which is the Crisis Intervention Team, um, as well as the Honor Card Team here in Dayton. What do you say we buckle up? Oh, guys, so if you don't know, what are we driving there? So we're driving a 2018 Ford Explorer. This is pretty standard for here at Davey. I know in some of your other videos, which I also did my own yeah. research. Oh, okay. Uh, the sleek front design that Ford came out with, which I thought was pretty sharp this model year. Okay, guys, we did a whole piece on the Ford Explorer in our police car series. Gonna link it up here. Today is about that Charlie shift on patrol. So what do you say we hit the road? Let's go, we got calls pending. Let's go. Welcome back to the channel, guys. I do these videos for two reasons. One, to educate you on law enforcement and the way that police operate. So if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments below. And two, to help with the recruiting efforts of these departments that I'm featuring on the channel, such as Davey PD. So with that being said, if you want to become a Davy police officer, you can go to DaveyPDJobs.com and apply today. Davy Police Department is hiring. So if you like what you see and you want to become a Davy officer, now's the time to apply. Let's get to the shift. All right, so we're heading to uh, a trespassing call. Uh, either a homeowner or a business is calling saying that there's somebody inside their home or inside a business and they don't want them there. So there's already one unit on scene. We're right around the corner to back them up and uh, we're gonna see what's going on once we get there. Hey, how are you? No, I've met you here before. You did? A long time ago, yes sir. Yeah, was I nice then? Because I'm still nice now. You were nice. Thank yes, sir, you were nice. That's okay. when I heard the address, I was like, oh, this is a familiar one oh, I've been to. God. No, because I used to, she, look, she had space. She said I'd keep my stuff here. So I, I'd keep my stuff here, and then I'd mow for her, mow for her. But then what happened was, like I said, six months before I got out of prison, she sells my RV, don't even tell me. So when I call my friend, that's what I went to prison for, running my car into that bar in Davie. How much time? I have three years, but I got out good behavior, too. Six months before. Are you, are you on any kind of 
you got probation. You don't mind if he runs you? Do you mind if I get your driver's license? That's okay. Yeah, no problem. Thank you, brother. You're just as cooperative. Don't get scared. I'm a habitual violent offender, but I'm not. No, no, more. no. I'm, no. I'm a Christian. Amen. Okay. Amen. Uh, for District 43, I am showing uh, he is a career offender. I am also showing he is on probation or supervised release status. I'm also showing that he is also a violent felony offender of special concerns. Uh, but that's about it. It's just stuff for your 43. You're the best. Thank you so much. I'm going to switch back over to Maine. I say, I'm going to come, I say, I'm on my way. I'm going to be down there. This is a situation. I'm sure everybody knows about me by now. Yes, sir, we do. Right? So we'll come, stand by with you. That way she can say, hey, he's doing this, he's doing that. No, I want to be, I want you to witness everything that I do. Oh, no, for sure. That's, yeah. that's what I want. All right? Okay. You all set to go. All right? Nice I'm meeting I'm sorry meeting. to hold you Stay guys safe, up. Right? No, no, no. Don't, don't worry about it, brother. God bless you. Anything you need from us, you call us, okay? I need a transmission. Oh, I, can't, that, I can't help with hey, that. Don't I'm go more reverse. Legal I'm going to go forward. That's why. <laughs> all right. There you that's go. That's all right, buddy. All right. So long story short, it looked like it was uh, an incident between two people that used to be friends. Um, something happened to where, I guess, the caller has somebody's property in their in their yard and then the guy wanted to get it back so it's it's more of a civil matter I guess you could say um, there's definitely a history of this I've been to this house before I've, I've handled uh, I've handled calls here before for the same incidents and, and another thing that we advised him was you know just because there's already tension in the situation there's tension between them um, you know next time he knows he's coming to pick up his stuff or he's, he's got to get there to grab something to give us a call you know call 911 call you know our non-emergency line we'll have an officer or two show up just to keep the peace to make sure things don't escalate even further to where now you know we're having to work backwards and a crime happened compared to us being there and we could have stopped that before anything escalated to that point we got man all right man we got a traffic crash with injuries uh, all airbags deployed and uh, somebody bleeding from the face so we're gonna try to get there quick and make sure they're okay all right As I was stating while we were driving down here, the initial call came out that there was a two vehicle crash with injuries. Right. So we wanted to get there as quick as we could to try to help anybody that was injured while fire rescue was in my route as well. Once we got here, I guess both people that were in the crash, everybody was conscious, alert, and breathing. One of the uh, people driving the vehicle had lacerations to the face, the other one had a really bad contusion on his left knee. Fire rescue was able to take care of them, give them as much aid as they can, and it looks like somebody's getting transported to the hospital now. After further investigation, it looks like the initial point of the crash occurred in Hollywood's jurisdiction, but due to the impact and the speed, it ended up on our side of the road, which is our jurisdiction. So right now, we're just staying on through until Hollywood Police Department gets here and takes over the investigation. Things like this sometimes happen not only on calls where it borders your jurisdiction, but maybe when you're driving home, as an officer, you have a duty to act, and if you see somebody in a car accident, or you see somebody that needs help, so you stop, you radio it in, let the jurisdiction know what you got, and then they send somebody over, so you just don't abandon the person until somebody gets there, kind of like a handing off the situation. All right, brother, so we have a, what's called a silent holdup alarm, so that's basically where it could be anything from somebody accidentally pressing the button, the, the emergency alarm button, or it it could be something as serious as somebody's robbing the place and an employee pressing the button. So we're hoping it's an accident, but we're prepared for anything. In this situation, prior to entering the building, the Davy PD dispatcher did what's called a callback. And that's where they called the business to see if someone will answer the phone and say, hey, we got a silent alarm panic button call here. We're sending an officer there. They should be on scene. Is there anything going on? Officer's about to enter the premise. Um, and also, if there is somebody inside doing something bad, they might get spooked and come out towards the officers. But either way, the officers are there on the scene, so that callback happens when they're on the scene. 
Hello. Did you guys by any chance have like an emergency, like a hold up button or something like that here? It's going off. Yeah, once I saw the two BSO guys over there, I was like, I don't think this place is being held up. So, but I'm just here to make sure you guys are okay. So we made contact with BSO, just kind of give them a heads up what was going on. They were kind of laughing about it. Nine times out of 10, it's something along the lines like that where somebody hits the button, but these kind of calls are so dangerous because that one time it is, you might have somebody tied up behind a cash register or in the back storage area, and people are there with guns robbing the place. So every time you go to a call like this, you kind of got to be on your P's and Q's and heads up that you might be running into a situation like that. False alarm. False alarm, thank God, man. Yeah. And or was it? Did we check those BSO IDs? <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine the elaborate? <laughs> Could you imagine that? That'd be inside. Someone's beeping. So we're looking for someone that's causing a disturbance here, bothering other customers. The, uh, I guess an employee here at the car dealership wants uh, us to make contact with him and try to get him off the premise, so. All right, let's take a look. Where you want to go to jail for? This is you and I just having a conversation. Listen to what I'm saying. Man. Yeah. I'm a great guy. Man. Okay. I'm a good dude. Man. Okay. I'm a good dude, man. I'm a great dude. Yeah. What? 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 Who's we? I've never met you before. No. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do you have your driver's license on you? What do you want to go to jail for? Listen, no, they're making my life miserable. Yeah. I'm not used to being poor, bro. Okay. I had money all my life. Yeah. Yeah. I had, I had money. A lot of people have it too, like. Mm-hmm. Y'all yeah, got me. I ain't fucked up, bro. I don't know, man. I'm confused. Nah, you fucked. Do you mind if I get your driver's license on me? So you got any warrants or anything like that? No. no? What, what happened? Oh, 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 are you finna take me for real? Oh, I'm gonna check. I'm gonna see. Let me check you. Let me see what, what you need from me. Is that your car? It's my car. <laughs> you gotta tell me what you I'm gonna do for you. Why you putting your gloves on like you finna do something to I me? I ain't doing nothing to you, man. If you give me your, your driver's license, I always I put gloves on. Man, bro. I lost my wallet, man. Y'all stole my We. I keep saying we. I ain't met you. Never met you oh, before. Man, God damn, man. Listen, let me you. Y'all gonna take me out of there. Hey, I have see to. see your other buddy right here, too. Yeah, we, we, there's always more than one cop that's coming. So somebody called you on me or something? Yeah, one of the managers called, said that you were causing a disturbance or something like that. So oh. I'm just making contact with you. I'm having a conversation with you. Oh, man. I just came to look at a car too. I thought my company was gonna come grab me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I said, yeah. you know, finest my car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but they've been with the f you know what I'm saying? And got me out here like this year, man. Yeah. Hey, come on, man. He ain't done nothing to me. But I don't know what you want to go to jail for. Man, man miserable out here, yeah? man. You want me to take you to the hospital? Do you feel like hurting yourself? No, I'm no? Okay. going to the hospital. I need some I goddamn even, money. I didn't even ask for your name. What was your name? You guys have me sleeping in the car or something. Why do you keep saying we? Like, we've I never met you before. First and foremost, let's commend Officer Smith on his patience. What he's doing here is what I like to call verbal jujitsu. I know some people call it judo, but a little more verbal jujitsu here, where he's kind of has patience, he's feeling out his opponent, which would be the person there who's a little bit agitated, as you can tell, and he's kind of countering what he says and moving them along in the conversation. The moment Officer Smith arrives, you can hear the subject say, man, take me to jail. That right there, is a red flag. In the beginning of the video, you can hear Officer Smith talk about that he is CIT certified or CIT trained, which is Crisis Intervention Team. So what that means is you deal with people that are going through some kind of mental crisis or a mental episode, and you learn tactics on how to kind of de-escalate the situation whenever you encounter somebody in that mental state. This guy was obviously agitated, he was cursing, he was talking all over where Officer Smith was having a tough time listening to what he was saying and following along. So you can hear Officer Smith kind of trying to make sense of what's going on. So he lets him talk a little bit and that's a tactic that we use in order to figure out what we got because all we got on the call is that there's a subject on the scene that's harassing customers. So we get there, make contact with the subject and we got to figure out what's going on with this guy. So what he's doing is letting him talk, but he's also doing some what I called verbal jujitsu. Why are there so many of you out here? Well, it's a slow day. Why are you putting on your gloves? I always put on my gloves. Honestly, a situation like this could go south in a second and would probably be justified if there was some kind of altercation between the two. But Officer Smith kept his cool. He's speaking cordially. Uh, he's being polite. But at a moment's notice, he's ready to handle business. And watching him put on his gloves kind of sends a clear message like, here, I'm here to talk to you. I want to help you. But if you get out of line, 
I will do what I have to do in order to control the situation. You could tell he's still got some corrections in him. The end result is the subject is ran. There's no wants or warrants. He was notified, hey man, you can't be on property. He agreed and he left. Best possible outcome that you can get. All right. What? Yeah, but that area is... Another big bump. Uh, we got a stolen vehicle. Um, one of our LPRs, I guess, caught it. We got two units that are on scene. We're trying to get there as quick as we can to uh, conduct a high-risk traffic stop. Did we already go through that? What's up, uh, baby? The trunk? No, we haven't gone through the trunk. We couldn't get it. Tell me what you got. I'm right there on Davey Road. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Orange, we're just right in the Good stuff, dude. Good stuff. Okay, this one. He's in your car? Yeah. Okay. Nothing crazy? No. Helmet, tools. Did he say anything? He says it's his cousin. His cousin Willie. Willie! Is his wallet in there? No. There's no wallet in here. There's a receipt for shoulder steak. <laughs> oh, his wallet's up here. Here you go. We got it. We got it. We got it. So basically what happened was is one of our officers was driving around. They saw the vehicle. They ended up running, running the tag of the vehicle, right. seeing that it came back stolen. Right. Uh, from that point, officer waited for other units to arrive on scene to conduct a high risk traffic stop. Once more than one unit was there, officers uh, conducted a high risk traffic stop with the red and blue lights on. Um, as of right now, the high risk traffic stop went successfully and they were able to successfully detain the suspect without any incident. Everything went smooth. There was no vehicle pursuit, nothing like that. Um, the officer who conducted the traffic stop waited for other units to arrive on scene, was notifying our dispatch and notifying other officers of where we were while we were following the vehicle. Yeah. His story is that he was borrowing the vehicle from a friend of his named Willie, and uh, that's his story. Okay. So, so as of right now, we're going to charge him accordingly, try to get a hold of the vehicle owner, and then take it from there. Uh -huh. I see you. Brower Police Academy. Looks like they're doing the evening traffic stop portion. Oh, they are reversing, so I don't know. Is that like driving portion? The, to my knowledge, it is. They do. They teach you how to drive forward. They teach you how to do some maneuvering and then some backwards driving as for, well. For the nighttime. For the nighttime, yes, All sir. Because right. you know as well as I do, when you drive during the day, it's a lot different than driving during the night. Two different monsters. Two definitely different monsters. That's the great thing about Charlie Shift. You get both. You get day and night. That's right. Day and night. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> I'm always ready. What are we doing? All right. We got a, looks like a single vehicle traffic crash. Um, some units are already on scene and fire rescues here as well. So we're going to go make contact and see what's going on. What's up, brother? How are you, man? Caleb, man, nice Tim. to meet you. Hey, buddy. Uh, how you doing FTO tonight? Murray, I'm doing well. How are you, sir? I'm fantastic, fantastic. So, I, I was just driving around. We saw, I wanted to see what was, everybody was okay, or what are they complaining of? Yeah, one guy, he's, uh, apparently is going, like, in and out of consciousness. I don't know if he's He's going to probably get transported to the hospital. Okay. Uh, we got a vehicle here that went off the road, didn't hit anything, but uh, the other vehicle's in the parking lot. Oh, right okay, there. okay, okay. So, uh... Service St. Mary's going to be doing the crash report. Are you guys doing the tow slip? Or are you and uh, Officer Church here is going to be doing right. the uh, tow vehicle tow slip. Roger that, man. I appreciate you. But if, they, if you need anything from me, you let me know, okay? So, I know we're not supposed to say it. So, it's a, it's a little bit Q. Oh, God, the Q word, I'm man. just saying Q. Don't say it, Let man. the I'll audience fill it in. <laughs> I'll pull over. I'll kick you out of the car if you say the Q word. So, a little bit of downtime. Listen, never any downtime. All right. So right now we're heading to a residence in Davie. Uh, there's a, a program that we have in Davie for residents of Davie uh, where when somebody goes out of town, they're on vacation, they put in something called an extra watch. They'll go to Davie Police Department's website, uh, put in an extra watch. And once that's submitted, you'll put the time frame that you're gonna be gone from from this time to this time. And what will happen is, is whoever's assigned to that zone where that resident lives, 
periodically throughout their shift, they're gonna check on the property, check on the residence, just to make sure the house is okay while the resident is out of town. That's a great program that Davy PD has. Shows a little extra effort there on their behalf. I know some agencies that have that as well. If you don't have it, check with your local PDs and maybe that's something you can start off. But great job, Davy PD. What are you looking for? Uh, we're just making sure there's no broken windows. There's no people that are sleeping out here. There's basically that there's nobody here that's not supposed to be here. No damage to the building or to the property. We're heading to an officer so calling for backup. I guess there was a bailout when he tried to do a traffic stop and uh, we're heading there now to give him some backup. Whenever you're in a situation that's fluid and active, something like a bailout, there are times where you activate the radio and then there are times where you're going hands on with the subject and you can't really respond to the dispatcher. So at one point as we were running code three here, to the officers for an emergency backup, the dispatcher was raising the officers and they weren't getting anything. Now that is super scary as officers are responding because that could mean one, like I said, they're either dealing with somebody or two, the officer could be hurt or something happened to their radio. You just don't know what's going on. And if you're not getting any response from that officer, it's kind of like, oh no, we need to get there. And as you can see, I pulled footage from the house that the bailout happened in front of and I was able to get the footage. The neighbors were nice enough, shout out to the neighbors, to uh, lend us that footage. You can see the officers there at the end taking in the subject to custody. Austin, all right, I need somebody to help me search. Yeah, we're gonna search the vehicle. Okay. Yeah, you already ready? Hey, I'm just gonna do a secondary. Hey, unlock it. Deep breath. I'm just going to do a secondary search, okay? I don't, no. evidence, I don't think so, just pictures. Yeah. Miss beer, 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 miscellaneous beer, item. For obvious reasons, fire rescue gets to the scene. Um, sometimes if the taser prongs are deployed and it hits a sensitive area, maybe the neck, face, or eye, or something where you have to go a little extra to remove the taser prong, you get fire rescue on the scene to help you out with those sensitive areas. Uh, removing taser prongs, if you don't know what they look like, it's kind of like a fishing hook straightened out. It's a little barb, has a little, little divot there so that when it goes into the skin, it doesn't come straight out like a needle, so it holds a little bit. You just kind of put your hand around the taser prong, push down, and then pull out and you're able to pretty, pretty easily get out those uh, taser prongs as you see the officers doing here. Whenever fire rescue comes and has to transport uh, an offender or somebody that you're taking into custody, it gets a little tricky because they can't ride on the gurney with their hands behind their back. So at one point you have to uncuff them and that can get a little tricky in situations, especially when you have a subject that's banging his head in the back of your police car against the police car screaming and yelling, it's irate like this subject here. At one point they're in fire rescue with the subject and he starts acting up and getting a little aggressive. So they call, hey, I need some help in here and all the officers rush to the scene. I don't know if you want to do, we've already, okay, we've already checked it a couple times. I don't know if you want to. I got you. <laughs> no, relax, I want to Relax, relax. I don't want to go to No, I want to go Tell her, tell her I don't want to go there. I didn't want to do I did nothing wrong. I did nothing wrong. I just wanted to go to jobs. I just wanted to work. <laughs> Basically what happened was is two officers attempted to do a traffic stop. 
uh, the vehicle in question slowed down to where the officers believed that the vehicle was going to end up stopping. The vehicle then abruptly accelerated, taking it right into this cul-de-sac. Officers knew that this was a dead end. Officers followed the vehicle in here. They saw the vehicle. They ended up trying to attempt another traffic stop. Once they approached the vehicle, the person driving the vehicle ran out of the car and started a foot pursuit into back of people's neighborhoods. Officers attempted to detain the individual. There, there was two taser deployments. Both of them were unsuccessful. Officers then deployed uh, OC spray, which helped gain compliance of the individual. Officers ended up detaining the person and placing him in the back of one of our patrol cars. Once we placed him in the back of the patrol vehicle, the suspect started banging his head against the partition, causing harm to himself. Based off that, and all of the other circumstances we had fire rescue come to check him out to do a medical evaluation on him. As you can hear, the suspect is obviously going through some sort of medical, mental, or drug-induced uh, episode. Uh, based off of those circumstances, why fire rescue wanted to come and check him out. While he was in the back, as you can tell, the individual became very combative. Due to that, we wanted for his safety as well as other officers and fire rescue safety, we wanted to do all precautions to try to restrain him as best we could. We had one officer riding in the back of fire rescue as well as one officer following in their patrol vehicle to the hospital. Once medically cleared, he's gonna be in our custody and will be charged accordingly. If it's your first time watching, you enjoyed the show, please subscribe to the channel, give this a like to help the algorithm know, hey, we got a banger on our hands. And if you have any comments, put them down below so that we can answer them. I'm going to try to answer those comments as quickly as possible, maybe even do some shorts in response to those comments. With that being said, I'll see you when I see you. And if I don't see you, well, then I'll see you. They're on the call with a, with a subject who's threatening to kill himself, so... We're heading over there right now. 809, I got one refusing to stop. Bella, I got two in the water. I got two in the water.